Best part about it is this crispy skin. It makes the whole thing worthwhile. I'm done. Spicy, intensely flavored meat, hearty rice dishes, deep-seated cooking traditions, and generous hospitality. Just a Louisiana guy. <laughs> These are some of the trademarks of Cajun country. Simply delicious. Food is deeply rooted in Cajun culture. This has been my whole life. You know what I mean? There's nothing I know different than this right here. Many families have been in this area for generations. It's a very close-knit community. And big feasts aren't just about eating, they're a reason to celebrate. I went down to Marksville, Louisiana, deep in Cajun country, during the Mardi Gras festivities to learn about the centuries-old Cajun tradition of the boucherie. But first, I couldn't come all this way without sampling a regional delicacy, boiled crawfish. I'm no expert, but what I've been told, sort of, is that you twist the body off the head, suck up the juice, then, I kind of just break the meat out of the tail, pull it out, and I eat it with my mouth. With my appetite thoroughly peaked, it was time to meet up with Clark Rochelle, a local boucherie expert. What exactly is a boucherie? Take a big pig and use from snout to the tail. I mean, everything was used. You made cracklings, you would make boudin, and that's what, I mean, everything would get used. And what's the occasion for boucherie? No special occasion, just everybody get together. I mean, pretty much 2013, 14 is when we really started. We all bought black, different sized black pots and we kind of started catering. Doing that kind of stuff, I mean, you learn how to measure and cook that much food. You know, doing the console and lay and I mean, serving for 1,500, 2,000 people. You gotta know what you're doing at that point. What is a cochon de lait? It's a roast suckling pig is what it actually means. But then it started to get so big, just we needed more meat to serve, you know, 1,500, 2,000 people. So that's why they, the control lay now is, it's not really a real control lay. It's just a roast pig okay. is what we, we're cooking now. Clark got to start working at the Duran Food Store in nearby Mansoura, Louisiana about three hours northwest of New Orleans, otherwise known as the Cochon de Lay capital of the world. Clark and his buddies have been doing these big family-style pig roasts their whole lives, and they invited me to experience one for myself at a friend's hunting and fishing camp on the bayou. We're here in Marksville, Louisiana at Mr. Todd's hunting camp, and we're cooking a Cochon de Lay today. We have all the sides, boudin, crackling, rice dressing, sweet potatoes, the works. It's gonna be a real Cajun feast. Just set it in there. All right, what we got, we lit the fire. We're getting our good cold bed going because it's not really the fire that cooks it, it's your coals from all your heat. So you gotta let that start burning down. Then we're gonna go rack the pig over here on the table, get it seasoned up and inject it, crack the back. We're gonna leave the head on it though. It looks a lot better. Okay. And uh, once we get that rolling, then we're gonna, right behind you, we have our crackling pot. And then the little bitty black pot, we're gonna take a bunch of uh, pork meat and just kind of just fry it in a little bit of grease and seasoning and it's delicious. What's that called? It's just fried meat. Fried meat? Yeah, whenever somebody, whenever you go to go to a boucherie or something and somebody says, oh, we're doing fried meat. Oh yeah, all right, perfect. Gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> what are you sprinkling it with? This is Tony Sachery. It's just a mixture of all the good Cajun spices. Salt, pepper, paprika, cayenne pepper. I think it got a little chili powder in it also. We prepped the pig, hung it on a frame, and attached it to a rotating motor in front of an outdoor fireplace. Perfect. Describe how the pig is being cooked today. Just fireplace, rotisserie in front of it, and it's racked up where it's butterflied. Still got the head on it, it's just spinning in front of the fire real, real slow until, I mean, we're just gonna really look at it and when the bones pop out, the shoulders or the joints, and then we'll stop it with the skin towards the fire and we just let it sit there and it'll crochet, which it'll bubble and get hard. Some of them, you put it against there, the whole back will, turn into like a one one big like pork rind almost. That rack is kind of a newer way of racking a pig. The old rack, you just got a piece of fence where it would fold together and you tied it together and you hung it in front of the fire. So this is a, a much more efficient and clean way to oh, do it. Oh yeah. That way you just take it, we're gonna put it on that same table, we're gonna put some cardboard. We'll throw the pig on there and we just pull those rods 
and be good to go. While the pig cooked, everyone pitched in making sides and other dishes for the feast. On one end of the compound, cracklins were in the works. These sections of pork skin and fat are fried in lard in big iron pots until crisp. In addition to cracklins, pieces of pork and coins of sweet potato are also fried in the leftover lard. Everybody knows just when to show up. Sweet potato chips. The cracklins and meat are sprinkled with Cajun seasoning, and the sweet potatoes are coated with sweet treat, a local rub of cinnamon, sugar, and vanilla. Goodness. A little sweet potato, a little fried meat, yeah. fried meat and maple syrup sandwich, soft white bread, uh, meat so, so tender, super good. Everything is delicious, and this is just the first course. There's still a lot more food to be made. Probably the most important, the rice dressing. Mr. Todd, the owner of the camp, gives me a few pointers while he cooks. So tell me what you got going on here. Okay, so we start in the beginning of dirty rice. But to have dirty rice, you gotta have dirt, right? So this is the beginning of dirt. We got the trinity, which is our onions, bell peppers, and celery. It's kind of the start to a lot of Cajun dishes. And we're just gonna saute these down, and then we're gonna add several different kinds of meat. Ground pork, ground beef, and then ground chicken gizzards, hearts, and livers. Okay, it's a mix that you buy? It is, it, it's actually made at Duran's. A lot of the stores around here, they'll sell their chickens, and instead of selling them with the giblets, they grind the insides up. I think traditionally it was more just the chicken innards, and then our generation has brought in more meat. More meat, M more, more meat and yeah, well, just more flavor, you know? A lot of people have been calling it Cajun rice dressing, or just simply rice dressing. You're calling it dirty rice, what's the difference? I think they're the same dish, but I don't think there's any two people that make them quite alike. So, what does it say on the container? Chicken dressing. It says dressing. <laughs> okay, I use their chicken dressing to make my dirt. <laughs> Final judge. We need some salt. No, hey, One of the most interesting aspects of a boucherie is that almost everything ties back to the pig. The rice dressing is made with pig parts and other animals and then a similar set of ingredients and even more pig parts are used to make the boudin. So what is boudin? Boudin is a sausage filled with rice, pork meat, and your vegetables, your whole eternity. And we just stuff it inside of the casing. You can barbecue it, you can boil it, you can steam it. You can just eat it like that. Some, some people just take it straight out the, the pan and you mix in it and eat it on a piece of bread before you even stuff it. Eventually, it was my turn you to make the boudin. You gotta feed the casing, like you gotta hold pressure but feed it at the same time. All right, stop slamming with them. Just pull it down? That's it, yeah, just pull it off. My first, uh, my first boudin. You go right here, oh. put your other one right here, and now twist. And usually, you, you wanna, if you kind of do that first and then twist. Oh, it helps it? Yeah, it helps it. So this is me. It's unwinded, <laughs> quick. <laughs> the little, the little <laughs> one's for you. <laughs> The boudin was hung up to cook with the pig, and a short while later, it was time for the growing crowd to eat. And I noticed that everybody who's here at the party today has their hand in cooking. That's just everybody's, everybody's sous chef. Yeah. Usually you don't touch another man's pot, but with us, ah, whatever. You know you're not gonna screw it up, so it'll be all right. There's one thing for sure. The food is absolutely delicious <laughs> and so flavorful. It's a true reflection of the area's culinary wow. traditions. So the interesting thing here, this Cajun rice dressing and the boudin contain very similar ingredients, but the flavor is completely different. The texture is completely different. For the boudin, I don't even know what to compare it to. It's soft, it's got a nice hit of spice and the bell peppers and the onions. So the pork is super tender. It's got a little bit of the smoke from the fire. Best part about it is this crispy skin. It makes the whole thing worthwhile. As they say around here, so I say boom. What's different about cooking and eating in Louisiana than other parts of the country? When you're cooking and having a good time, you're putting a lot of love in whatever you're doing, a lot of seasoning. The Louisiana culture is more about a community, no strangers. You know, that's just how we are. People in Cajun country have a way of making you feel welcome, like you're part of the community. The food was great, but the company was even better. <laughs>
So that was an incredible Cajun feast today. I want to thank Mr. Todd and Clark for throwing us this wonderful meal and cooking a cochon delay with us and especially for teaching me how to make boudin. So make sure you like and subscribe and throw a comment down below. Okay, we need a wiggle from you. A wiggle. Oh, we gotta get a wiggle. I'll give you a crunch. Huh? There's no wiggle though. Oh, that's a one side. Oh. We got to put him in the boat.